Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining another episode of Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello, John. Hello, hello. So what are we doing today? Well, today we had talked about mass prep and pretty much when it comes to surveying and what do people want the most, it always comes back to one of the number one things is helping them understand what they want to eat. So we talked about mass prep a little bit, we talked about it, but today what we're going to do is talk about a couple of the meals that are our personal go-tos. We're not just going to talk generically about them. We're going to talk about everything from ingredients to our process to kind of walk you through. So by the end of today, you should have two people's opinions on a couple of the stuff that they do and how they fit it into everything from when they leave work, timing, and, and everything. So you can kind of visualize uh, putting these into your, your uh, I guess, workflow. I always call it workflow. I should, right? So do you, and you're into your personal whatever, you know, whatever you want to call it. So uh, I'd like you to go first. You've, okay. you've got more experience with keto stuff and been doing keto a lot longer, and uh, you did the mass preps. So you kind of have a little bit of understanding of what you talked about. And uh, so, yeah, what, are you, what's your, uh, what recipes did you pick for today? Okay, so the two that I picked today um, are not going to shock anybody, but it's um, both of them are beef. <laughs> I am a beef girl. I do love it. Um, so the first one that I picked is a low-carb uh, bacon cheeseburger casserole. And the second one that I picked is a slow cooker shredded Italian beef. So um, John had mentioned how we go about our day. So I, I've talked about this before. Um, I prep all of my meals on Sunday, and then it either goes in the refrigerator or freezer, and then it's there for the rest of the week. Um, I I don't want to leave work at 5 o'clock or after, have to go home and deal with cooking and then cleaning up afterwards. My husband gets home before me, so if he's hungry when he gets there, the food is already there um, waiting for him. So that's how I do mine. Um, I do a lot of casseroles in the winter and as, well, as well as the slow cooker meals. Um, so the ingredients for the cheeseburger casserole. Um, so before you get to the ingredients, I just yeah. want to ask. Sure. So when you do your prep, you made the casserole whenever you did your prep. That is correct. So let's say it's on, uh, so give me an example. You do your mass prep on what day? I do mine on Sunday. So in this case, you took all the ingredients that you're about to go through, and you made this casserole, and you stuck it in the refrigerator? That's correct. All right. Okay, so I'm picturing this. So so what? Let's assume you, you're making it like, it's like a, a Tuesday. You pull it out, and then you bake it? No. I make it. I prep it. I bake it. I do everything. 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 I do nothing so when I Just reheating it. it. That's right. All right. Okay, um, picturing it. And I even separate it into its own container, so we don't even have to mess with that. All of my cooking, all of my cleanup is done on Sunday, and then... She has seven crock pots for each day. <laughs> seven crock pots? <laughs> I, I do you make your casserole, you. Matt, can you make a casserole in a crock pot, huh? I, I do. Have, well, everyone knows that I am the kitchen gadget queen. Um, I do have a few crock pots and a few casserole dishes. But um, Okay, so ingredients that you're need, you'll need for this are two pounds of ground beef. Again, I use 80% or less uh, ground beef. Two cloves two cloves of garlic, um, a half a teaspoon of onion powder, one pound of bacon cooked and chopped, um, eight eggs, one can of tomato paste, and it's the small little six ounce cans, one cup of heavy whipping cream, one, uh, one half teaspoon of salt. You can use more salt if you want to. I generally do. Uh, one fourth teaspoon of ground pepper, and you can use less of that. I generally do. Uh, Twelve ounces of grated cheese. And if you're following along and you're in the car or something, listen to this later. I mean, we're, we're going to put post these on the recipe section this, of the website. This one's uh, out there, isn't it? Um, it might be. Thank you. It might already be out there. We'll, yeah. we'll double check no matter what. So, so okay. you don't have to pay attention to the actual recipe, just uh, so the content. Yeah, but but if you're at home and you want to jot it down. Just rewind. There you go. Um, so obviously the first thing that you do is you're going to cook your bacon and your uh, ground beef. Cook so it do you down. have an opinion on using that versus just buying at Costco the big, huge bag of bacon bits? 
Yes. So I did used to do that um, until I looked at the ingredients, Uh-oh. the bacon bits. So I'm afraid. Um, although there's no dextrose or malodextrin or anything in there, um, I, forgive me because it, it's been a long time since I bought them, but mm-hmm. there is something in there that I decided not to use the bacon bits. But what I do um, for this specific thing, and if I need uh, bacon crumbles, I take the uh, pound of bacon and I cut it into small pieces while it's still raw, and then I throw it into a Dutch oven and I fry it in the Dutch oven. So you don't get the splatter on top of your stove, um, but then I don't have to mess with crumbling it up once I've taken it out of the oven. So for me, it's just a little easier. Uh, it does take a little longer to cook, um, but you just kind of break it up with your uh, wooden spoon and you've got your bacon crumbles already ready for you. Yeah, sometimes when I do prep, I cut the bacon, the pound of, or whatever it is, in half and then make the crumbles with one side of it. And then, yeah, because my kids, for some reason, like half pieces of bacon instead of full pieces of bacon. <laughs> I don't know why. Nice. You guys ever Maybe because they're half size of an adult. Well, I don't know. I will. I don't see any reason why I would go for a smaller piece of bacon myself. Have you um, tried bacon? Bacon, by the way. Baking bacon. Yeah, we, I do yeah, every we, week. We've talked about that before. And she spiralizes hers too, mm-hmm. so she can fit more on the pan. And I have I have done that on occasion. I've stole that idea. Yeah. Um. So then I just put the uh, uh, bacon on this on top of the stove in the Dutch oven. Start browning the beef. Mix in the garlic and the um, the salt, the uh, onion powder uh, with the with the ground beef. And while that's cooking, um, I will cut up um, dill pickles. This recipe does not call for dill pickles, but because it is a cheeseburger casserole, you like the dill. I yeah, I put dill pickles in. <clears throat> I know you're not a fan of dill pickles. That's okay, but... just because I have a pickle problem doesn't mean you can't enjoy them. <laughs> um, so right there, you're at like two pans. Is that right? Right. Yep. Um, and it'll be the third because then you'll have your, your casserole dish. Um, so cook your meat. Um, I I generally cook it to where I cook the fat back into it. Um, so once it browns, I lower the heat and I let it just sit there and, and simmer until the fat has actually absorbed back into the meat uh, versus draining. I know a lot of people drain the meat, but... Um, at once that is done, then you mix the bacon into your um, hamburger mixture. And then in a, in a bowl, you're going to whisk together your eggs, your tomato paste, your heavy cream, um, and then I add a little bit of salt in that as well. So what do you start with? Do you start with the tomato paste because it's thick and, and then slowly add in the cream? Or I do, do yeah. Do so I followed the recipe in that order when I first started doing it. Let me tell you, it's messy and it's hard to, once the eggs get in there because they're slimy, it's hard to get all that stuff mixed up. So yes, I do start um, with the paste in the bowl first and then add the whipping cream. I mix that together until it gets kind of liquidy. Um, and then I add the rest of it uh, just, just to make it easier to incorporate everything. Those are the tips that I think are helpful though. So you yeah. don't have these chunks of tomato paste and... yeah. Which I have to tell you is not a bad, I mean, you don't really want that, but in the beginning, before I learned those tricks on my own, um, I did have those chunks, and sometimes they are a nice little delight when you take the bite and you just get a pop of of tomato, so it, it's not always a bad thing, but yes, I do mix it a little well, bit. If you like that, you could just get a diced tom- yeah. tomato and toss it in there. Which, again, my husband is anti-vegetable, so there's no diced tomato for us. <laughs> Fair enough. So those are things you could tweak. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and if I mean, if there's something that you like on your burger, um, after we cook this, sometimes when I serve it, I put mayonnaise on it, uh, put mustard on top sometimes. So um, if there's, you know, again, anything that you liked on your burger, you could put on this casserole. <coughs> um, okay, so then once you get all of everything cooked and mixed, you put the meat mixture in the bottom of your casserole dish, and then you pour the egg mixture over top, um, and, well, before, I'm sorry, you put, the egg, you put the meat down first, and then you put a thin layer of cheese, and then you put your egg mixture, and then you top it off with the remaining uh, cheese. So cheese, I know we've talked about before, and I know you've, the kind, I, I buy the generic at Costco, 
kind. But do you do you actually get shredded cheese now, or do you shred it yourself? I do not buy shredded cheese. Um, I do shred my own. So some of these things are leading questions, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you do that? Um, so I have yet to find a shredded cheese that does not have some kind of um, food starch in it. Most of it is potato starch, and they use it to keep the cheese from clumping. Um, it's quite honestly, I don't really care if my cheese is clumped. I mean, once I once I grate it at home, um, I'll just break it apart when I go to use it. Most of the time, I shred it for what I need, so I don't have a lot left over anyway. But if I'm doing like a taco meal or something, and so I need it for the rest of the week, um, it will clump together in the refrigerator. I just break it apart, and I mean, it's kind of it's not pretty, and I know that that's why they do the potato starch and stuff in the stores. Um, but if you do it at home, with the uh, you know tree pulp as opposed. Ah uh, yes, the cellulose. Mm-hmm. They call it cellulose because it sounds uh, better than tree pulp. Parmesan. But yeah, parmesan's the worst for that. But yeah. Yeah. So now Costco does sell parmesan that does not have it. Mm-hmm. Um, but their like their um, cheddar and Monterey Jack that does have right. starch. So. Yeah, I, um, I looked at my bag just ye- just yesterday. And yeah. it does have it. Um, so, yeah, so then um, you top, the, you know, put the cheese on the top, throw it in the oven. You're going to bake it for 350 for 30 to 35 minutes. Um, you want to make sure that the center of it comes clean with a toothpick. and uh, Or the j- jiggle test. Um, you, you, can do the, test. you can do the – you can do – I do jiggle test on when I'm making eggs, but this one um, – the eggs may not actually be cooked all the way into your meat, and you. I mean, that's why I use the toothpick for this because the jiggle test doesn't really work that well with this one. So, if somebody was a little bit more snobbish like me when it comes to having their food right, right <laughs> out of the oven, is there any reason with this recipe that I couldn't make it ahead of time, like I do a breakfast casserole, whatever kind of thing, and leave it in the refrigerator and then bake it the next day? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if that's how you do your meals, yeah, you absolutely can. Um, I mean, I, the only you thing I would caution the entire week that way, probably. Right. You don't want to let it sit in your refrigerator for. But I mean, I've got those sixteen by nine pans that have the plastic uh, rubber madeish container that goes over the top of them, and then yep. you just throw it all in there, clip the lid on there, and yeah, pop it out the next day and bake it if you want. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I would caution is depending on what brand of pan you have. You may not be able to take it from fridge to oven right away, so you might have to let it sit um, and adjust the temperature of your pan. But other than that, I mean, yeah, if that's how you cook, um, is that you want to prepare everything but then cook it each day, you absolutely can do that. We'll do another session on the microwave secrets that you have because you haven't convinced me yet. I do have I do have microwave secrets because my husband is also one who is not a fan of reheating. This and the immersion blender are two things that I have yet to uh, – Holy oh, embrace. <laughs> Just leave it, leave it. <laughs> All right, so anything else with that? You said the toppings, you just you just played it right out. Um, just out of curiosity to give a little bit deeper, you said you portion it out and break it up. So let's say you got the 16 by 9 pan, you cut it into six pieces. Do you put those right into like a glass container and eat it out of that, or how do you? Yeah, yeah, I have um, containers. I just put the... Um, whatever the serving is, I put it in there and then throw them all in the refrigerator or freezer, depending. Um, but most of it, most of it I cook um, on Sunday and then just refrigerate as we're eating it. Gotcha. Yep. All right. So that's delicious. It Moving is on. delicious. And again, you can put any topping. Oh, real quick. How, how about how long does it take you now that you've mastered? Uh, to be honest, the time to cook the meat is is the longest Um, because as that's cooking I'll prep everything else Um, so once the meat is completely browned I'll throw it in and I'm ready with the rest of it so yeah it's I don't know I'd say probably 20 minutes for the meat to brown all the way and the bacon to cook and then you start prepping the next thing as it's right yep so the next thing in this instance is Italian beef which is one of my favorites it is, and this one is the easiest ever. Um, if you're feeling extremely lazy, this is the go-to, let me tell you, because there is nothing to do with this. So the longest thing that it's going to take is 
thawing out your meat. Um, once you have your meat thawed, which I think I've revealed before I have a problem with this, I forget to take the meat out um, the day before, so I sometimes cook frozen meat. But in this instance, um, you want to make sure that it is thawed out because otherwise it's going to be too watery. Um, but you're, um, you are going to have a um, chuck roast is what I use. Um, and I use a two to three pound chuck roast. And why do you use chuck? Um, I use chuck for the fat content, honestly. Um, it's generally, and again, I have mine from the butcher, but even in the stores when you buy chuck, you'll have a really nice, um, fat cap on it, um, so it keeps your, your meat moist and gives it a lot of great flavor. If you didn't have that, but any kind of, any of the cuts of meat that, I mean, if you had something else, it would be okay, just not nearly, it. it's just, that's your per preference. Yeah, it, this one shreds a lot easier, I think, uh, than some of your other roasts do. Mm -hmm. um, now, if it's, I mean, you could make the same thing with a different roast and then slice it, too, I mean, if that's um, but for the shredded, this one, this one shreds a really nice. Okay, so the the equipment that you're going to need for this one is a crock pot, clearly, um, and then that's really it, a crock pot. So I always put liners in my crock pot because again, I'm, I hate cleaning this. <laughs> and I won't use liners because I just can't handle the cooking in the plastic. Yeah, I I don't. I'm just so lazy. Like I, once I discovered the liners, it makes the cleanup so easy. Not that you don't have to still clean your crock pot because they do leak a little bit, but you don't have all that crusted around the top. And um, no, it's just like cooking. It's just like microwaving plastic. I won't do that either. I've just come. I don't know. It's like a mind gap. I can't handle it. Yeah. And and I put my crock pot, um, crock, with for lack of a better term, in my dishwasher. So I do too. But when you cook. Um, yeah, like I mean, like a lot of times you have that that crust on the yeah, or whatever. yeah, that, no, that I'm following you. layer. So I'm following you. and I, I don't know. My husband washes dishes before we put them in the dishwasher, which to me is ridiculous. I do some of that. <laughs> oh, I, I can uh, relate. <laughs> you guys, yeah. you guys got it real easy. I have a crock pot that not removable crock. Oh, I threw those oh, away. Yeah, I, threw, <laughs> I threw those away <laughs> years ago. That old. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, yeah, I threw those away. And I definitely would be using liners and those things, but yeah. I have them, but I always forget to use them. Once I discovered that they made those Crocs that came out, those those old ones went in the trash. And for the record, I am a little two-faced because I will, if we have a beef brisket and we're smoking it, I will put it in a turkey bag for the first pit bit. But I don't, I, it burnt, I mean, like, it just it feels wrong when I do it. <laughs> I just feel dirty. <laughs> it's more for finishing it. To capture the meat, the fat and stuff, than it is. I don't. I think I said to start with, but I actually meant to end. To end, yeah. Instead of aluminum, I wrap mine in aluminum. Yeah, I can't do. Yeah, I decided that that the aluminum was the <laughs> okay. Was so we need to okay. So this is that's why we're having this conversation though. I just like get people's opinions out because I think that sometimes those little tricks are the ones that are helpful. You know what works to you for you. So, okay, so ingredients for this one, um, this this actually calls for half a cup of white vinegar, but I use apple cider vinegar. Yeah. I don't think it do matters. Yeah. Uh, especially um, for something like Italian beef, it's not going to be that much of a difference. Yeah. Either one. Um, and people ask why. So in case you don't know why you use vinegar, it actually helps break down the fibers of the meat so your meat is more tender once you cook it. Um, Preach you. Yeah. Preach you. That's right. Um, and I'm actually going to give a shout out to my husband for that because I did not know that. Um, Pre-keto, I was a terrible cook. And uh, the first roast that I made for him, he told me about that trick that his mom used to do. So shout out to the hubby for that one. Um, okay, so half a cup of vinegar, white vinegar or apple cider, one tablespoon of minced onions. Um, I tend to use a few more than that because I think one tablespoon is not that many. Um, a half a tablespoon of garlic powder. This calls for red pepper flake. You can put those in or not, depending on what your flavor palette yeah, is. With my wife, I can't put it in. Yeah, I don't care for red pepper flake. Um, like, I, I can do spice, but I, I'm not a fan of the red pepper flake. So, 
I actually leave those out and didn't tell my husband that they were part of the recipe because he would want them in there. <laughs> um, and then it says seven pepperoncini uh, peppers. I actually buy the sliced ones, and I don't measure, so I just Dump. open the jar and just start pouring in that with juice. So I don't know how many is in there. Do you pour the juice, too? I do. Well, you don't need the red pepper flakes as much if you're putting the hot pepper juice in there, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, that's do you buy the little can that comes pre-cut? Because that's what I, I do. I buy a gigantic jar okay. because Brian loves these things. So, um, gotcha. yeah, it's like a it's like a big pickle jar. Um, right. And they're already pre-sliced and pre-seeded, so I don't have to mess with all that. Uh, you can use whole ones. I mean, I've seen it's people work. Use that right. before. I prefer your, your method. Myself. Yeah. I'm, I have used, like, put whole ones in there, not chop them or anything. Um because I thought that it would be easier for me to pick them out because I don't really like the flavor. I mean, I like the spice of them. I just don't like eating peppers. Um, it didn't really work so well, so now I, I just use the chopped ones. Um, it also calls for banana peppers. So, again, I use I already have a jar um, in the refrigerator that's already sliced. So I use that as well. I don't use, usually use the juice from the banana pepper ones. Um, I'll just add the peppers in. And sometimes I leave those out. So I do sometimes forget. Um, so you can put them in or not. And, again, if you don't like hot stuff, you can leave those things out. Um, then you do a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, and then four tablespoons of butter. So what I have found is if I have a really nice fat cap on my um, roast, I stick with the four tablespoons of butter, but if the um, if I don't have a lot of fat on it, I'll add a little bit more butter to the recipe just to kind of make up the difference in the fat. So you don't brown your meat first? I do not. I do not. And I used to brown my meat for most of the stuff that I make in a slow cooker, but here's what I found. It's going to brown itself to begin with, and when you put all this other stuff in it, it you can't even see the meat. So um, now, if I do if I do hamburger or ground uh, pork or something, I will brown that because I'm a little weirded out by that. I don't know why. But if I do any sort of roast or um, steak, my chili that I make, I throw steak in it. I don't brown this uh, before I put it in there either. Yeah, I, I, I don't brown it anymore either. I, I never could quite understand why you would brown a piece, big, huge chunk of meat before you throw it in there. Yeah, I think it really is the look. Locking in, locking in the but you're big sear. Yeah. Like, like, a, like a sear. Which I could understand if you were cooking it quickly. But in a slow cooker, I mean, for me, I put it in. You get engulfed with all the moisture anyway, yeah. eventually. So. Yeah. I, I don't see the need for it. So I never I have. I've and again, it's more work. It's one more dish to, to wash. It if it's I just it's lazy one day, and I'm like, it didn't matter. Yeah. I've cooked no. many roasts in crock pot and no never problem. seared it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't do it. So we just spent longer talking about it than it takes you to do this, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> you throw all of it in there, put the lid on, and walk away from it. Put it on low for eight hours, and you have your whole meal. Um, this says that it makes eight servings. It, I guess that would depend on who is eating it, because I'm pretty positive that it lasts longer. I mean, it spreads more than eight servings for my husband and I. So since you're, you're a tracker macros a little bit more than me. Do you find that this then is a, has a higher, to me it seems like it has a higher protein ratio. Do you offset that by anything besides uh, changing the butter like you mentioned? Um, not really. I mean, yeah. so for me, I don't focus as much on the daily macros as I do just an average. Um, when I start people out, that's what I want them to watch. Um, so I don't really reveal what I do personally until they've done this for a while. Um, but for this, if I was having somebody start this out in the beginning, um, I would say that um, you would do, I don't know, somewhere between two and five ounces of meat. And I weigh everything. Um, but I would, I would eat probably two, between two and five ounces of meat. Um, add cheese to it if you want. Um, I have added mayonnaise to it um, as well. Um, but it's, uh, I mean, you can add solid kind of fats like that to this. Like, I don't know that I would 
really recommend adding more butter to it or adding like an MCT oil. We've talked about adding to vegetables before because this is going to, I mean, this is a... I personally, lean meat, will, will, I will dribble MTC oil over, over it sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I think for this, though, it would make it a little bit too runny. And so you're going to end up with more of it on your plate because there is a little bit of liquid with this anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's not soupy, but it's, I mean, there is moisture on it. Gotcha. Um, so that's, that's why I would go with more of a solid fat with this one, to be honest. Um, I mean, and there are there are lots of them that I would recommend doing MCT uh, with, but I just I feel like you would probably be trying to sop it off the plate the azure, more. Azure, azure, yeah. whatever they call that. Azure. Azure. Yeah. So your your chuck roast, how do you know what the fat content is? It's not like hamburger because they don't they don't say that this is an eighty twenty chuck roast. Right. Um, so with the um, the tracking tool that I use. Which is um, what again? I forgot. It, it I, and I'm going to butcher it. And I've heard people call this different, so I call it chronometer. It's C R O N O M E T E R. Um, and the one that I use is specific to keto. You have to go through uh, Dr. Maricola's website to get it. Um, but when you punch it in, it'll it it'll, it'll give you a description. So it said, you know, Chuck Roast, and it'll say, you know, one inch fat cap or okay. whatever it is. So. It, it's not a hundred percent, but sure. you're going to get uh, in the ballpark, yep. right? Yep. So, okay. um, but yeah, my recommendation for this one would just be to add a more solid fat to it uh, versus something that's liquidy. But do you have anything else with this? Um, a lot of times I don't. Um, but I I would pair this if somebody wanted a vegetable. I would pair this one uh, with probably um, an asparagus. Uh, maybe a Brussels sprout or a green bean, to be honest. Yeah. And the other one, um, if you wanted a vegetable with the cheeseburger casserole, I probably would do green, bean, green beans with that one. Um, mash, uh, mashed cauliflower would be good, too, like a mashed mm -hmm. potato-ish kind of thing and dump it on top of a mashed potato. That is, yeah, that is true. But we all know how I... A cauliflower. So right. That would, that'd be why that did not pop into my mind as a side. So speaking of cauliflower, and this is a fantastic lead-in because one of the dishes that I like to make a lot because it's that it's that thing that I do kind of following the methodology about cooking it ahead of time and then having the refrigerator uh, is the loaded cauliflower, which is basically a version of or a I wouldn't say it's a copycat of a, a loaded baked potato, but it's kind of like that. So exact same philosophy on the the um, 16 by 9 pan and everything. <clears throat> but in this, in this case, I'm extra lazy. I mean, the options, obviously the main ingredients, cauliflower, based on the name. But if you think about it, I get the cauliflower that's already, I think, it depends on where you go, but sometimes they call it riced, but it's basically smashed up. And I do not cook it ahead of time. I just dump it right. I just rip the pan open and dump it right in the bottom. Um, Is this baked? Sorry. It will be. Okay. It okay. Will be. So good question. So just to kind of go over the ingredients really fast before we get into the process, because you're right, I kind of started diving in already. Um, it's the cauliflower, which for me it's it's like a it's like a pound or a you know fret, what do you want to call? Um, sour cream and mayonnaise, uh, grated cheddar cheese, bacon crumbles, uh, chives, which are really optional, like kind of more like for for show, and then uh, butter and garlic powder. I salt and pepper to taste. So you got two directions you could take this and both I've done it both ways. I've made this I don't know how many different ways. <laughs> so so it's never the same twice. <laughs> but but basically if something's are if I don't have that cauliflower already cooked like that, I have done it where I've taken frozen cauliflower and um, put it in a corral is it is it is the white containers that that have the glass tops on them or those is that what's that called? The white Probably Corral. Corral. 
whatever those co very, very, very common dishes are, I'll take the frozen, stick it right in there, put it in the microwave for six minutes, <coughs> and then dump the water off of it, and then just uh, take one of those, you know, wooden spoon and just kind of smash, smash it a little bit. Uh, you know, if I had the steamer going, I'd, I'd probably even be willing to steam it. That, that That's just going to add a little moisture to it. Uh, but when it's pre-cooked like that, then you cut the cooking time basically in half. But if you're just ripping the uh, cauliflower bag open and dumping it in, it's not cooked at that point. So then what, <clears throat> what I do is, because I'm lazy, is I, I put it all in the same pan that, um, that I'm cooking it in. Um, if you wanted to and you cared about the consistency, like we talked about earlier, about mixing it, mixing in the uh, the ingredients so that it's evenly distributed better, you can put it in a bowl. But basically, you're putting in four ounces of sour cream, and which is basically I just take a like a serving spoon and take a scoop out and throw it in there, and then the same the same exact thing with the mayonnaise. And I just put one in, in one side, one in the other, and then uh, I put the butter. If it's if it's kind of pre-cooked already, then you can just put put the butter like straight in there. It'll melt like instantly. And then I put the bacon crumbles, and then I stir it up. So I do that a little bit before the cheese, and then I just dump the cheese on the top. And then usually for looks, then I'll come back and uh, put the some bacon crumbles on the top. So I know I went over that really fast, but it literally is just like that. Um, I basically am stirring it right in the bowl I'm going to cook it in. So those white dishes have a pretty high lip on them, and every once in a while I got to like you know stir inside till I get the liquid thin. For the most part, I can control it pretty pretty well, and then I can I basically depending on how much liquid's in there, decide how much cheese I'm throwing on the top. So if you really want to measure it, we'll have to. For this one, um, we'll, I'll have to actually like kind of do a little more due diligence to post. So this one might not be there right when you go out there, but we can find something very similar to point you to that will get you really close. Um, if you do not have the mayonnaise, so, you know, it, you, some people have mayonnaise. They cook, they cook on their prep day. If I don't have mayonnaise, then I just put more sour cream in there. And if I don't have sour cream, I just put a little more mayonnaise in there. And I don't really worry about it too much. So it does change the taste a little bit, but not enough that it bothers me. Nice. So is it a strong bacon, like the loaded part of it, is that a strong flavor? Or do you still taste the cauliflower? So that's, that's a, well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, for you, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you could probably pull the taste of cauliflower, which... Out of I don't know, uh, uh, you know <laughs> anything, but uh, I don't. I I find that I don't taste the cauliflower at all. Okay. I do know that if you if you like Google a recipe and you just Google loaded cauliflower and you just pull one off the internet, it is not the topping topping ratio is not enough for me personally. So okay. I I put like double the topping um, on mine than when than than the ones I've seen on the internet. Okay. So that might change the ratio. So, like, for instance, um, if, we, if, if we just link to one, I may, I just may put in the comments in the link that I, that I double the topping okay. that I put in there. And the, the other thing that I do uh, that is sometimes, like, if I'm reheating it or whatever, I'll, I, will, I will melt more cheese on the top depending on, you know, what else I'm eating. So you kind of control a little bit of your – of uh, tweaking the fat to this dish by either adding cheese when you're heating it back up or whatever. But to me, I cannot tell the difference when I heat this up versus pulling it right out of the oven because of the consistency. Okay. So I don't have a problem um, with this particular one, and and I will put that stuff just pretty much like right in my little teeny crock pots for lunch. And... Uh, it's like, I still need to check into those. We should do a whole episode on that because it's like I could call it my crock pot, crock pot uh, lunches or something. Yeah, because it's it's a kitchen gadget that I do not have, I and I I don't. You're talking about the small ones. Yeah, the little yeah, small ones. I got these little things to his desk, and I've got a small one. See? Well, 
It's not like a crock pot, though. He's, I mean, it this is. is. This is a crock pot. Yeah. See, his is something different. You buy these inserts, and then you put the meals in the inserts, and then you have the warmer at work, and you just bring these inserts in. Him and his wife have them. They're amazing. I saw her with it one day, and we'll uh, we'll do a whole entire episode on that because yeah. I've got this like crazy like little process I do for lunches too. So, so where you yeah. divide it up and put it into glass, so I just do that <clears> with. And they're uh, they're just uh, stainless steel. Yeah. So I, before we move off of this, I did look up the bacon, and I was mistaken. There's not an ingredient in it. I think it's because I'm cheap. That's why I quit buying it because it was expensive. I looked the ingredients. Yes. Right. The bacon is fine. <laughs> so in case anybody was wondering, uh, the ingredients are good. So I just wasn't willing to spend. The Kirkland's money. brand. Yes. Oh, fantastic, man! You made my day because I wouldn't have probably changed because I'm so lazy. Yeah. Part of that is though, when you open a bag of bacon bits that's that big, you want it to use it before it gets bad. Right. And so I tend to leverage that. Yeah, and that's where my husband and I we weren't we weren't using it before it was going bad. Um, and so for the the cost of it, it just wasn't it, it wasn't something I wanted to do. So fantastic. Bacon. I mean, I get bacon cheap. I got a whole freezer full. When it goes on sale for two ninety nine a pound, I yeah. I unfortunately have too much uh, chicken, which is what we're going to talk about next. So I know that wasn't quite a main dish, but I wanted to call it out because it's that dish that I that I always do in the beginning that I kind of leverage throughout. And the com- holidays are coming, and that would be a great a great side dish for holidays. So. <clears throat> Yes, fantastic dish for the holidays. Um, so the next one I'm going to talk about is actually, uh, uh, I, I kind of cheated a little bit because it's kind of a twofer because I know we're only supposed to talk about two, and I promise I can do it really fast. Don't worry. Uh, crock pot, to your point, I do crock pots usually on Mondays because my kids have soccer practice, and I go, and by the time I get home, we don't have any time to cook, so chickens uh my my brother raises chickens so we have them frozen in the freezer and in the crock pot i always do a full chicken and uh in the middle and then they also half of them we got um where they're already cut up so it'd be the same thing as buying a full small bird and then buying like legs and thighs or something like that so whatever you can do any kind of combination it's not specific to a particular type of chicken. So any type of that, I literally just throw it in the, in the crock pot and put salt and pepper and Italian seasoning on it. And that's it. Wow. That's all I do. And we, we I always have a side with that, like the cauliflower or like something else, but um, it's usually a fast side. So you mentioned green beans earlier. Uh, we had green beans at our house and we have plenty of freezer bags full of green beans throw that in, in a smaller version of that white curl. Do you grow your own green beans? Is that what you mean? We do, yeah. Okay. But you can buy them frozen. They have organic frozen green beans at uh, Costco, and that's what I... Man, we should be sponsored by Costco. I, I know, I know. I Someone should, asked me one day if I got that. paid by them. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, if I had a Sam's in East Peoria, I would, that's where I would go. I mean, I'm not... It's not that I love Costco. It's just, it's, it's like a three I do actually love Costco. If they didn't have that, I'd probably check out the Aldi's because I hear they're nice now. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Aldi's and Costco are the it for me. Okay. Well, anyway, we're getting off sidetracked, and I'm the king of that. So, anyway, (laughs) meal there, literally just whatever kid wants whatever, just pull it with the tongs, and by that point you you are going to eat it. It is just like, you know, fall off the bones, and uh, and I, I do keep the bones in and make bone broth, but that's a whole other conversation. Now, uh, the reason why I called it a twofer is because I will use that for the meal, and then Tuesdays are our Taco, taco Tuesdays, um, and uh, basically we almost always do some type of the you know, tacos or fajitas or whatever. So if we don't have chicken, then we will just brown hamburger and do the whole taco thing, of course, like we've already talked about. But this, um, usually at the end of the night, I will go ahead and debone, throw all of the chicken into a container, and then on Tuesday, you just dump the container in there, throw some uh, 
fajitas to make fajitas, but I use the same homemade seasoning for tacos, for fajitas, and for regular tacos <coughs> to keep filling up that container. But we've already talked about that too. Yeah. So out of curiosity, you it's you <coughs> and your wife, and you have two smaller children. Yep. And my so and your I'm just with okay. Them, yeah. So when you make a meal like this that you're going to do for two days. How, how much chicken do you put in so that you could stretch that for your meal on Monday and then use that same meat again for two? Uh, we do two, two well, they, the equivalent of two birds. Okay. Um, our birds are small, though, the, because they're locally grown and whatnot. They're not, it, it's not nearly the meat that you would have on a bird. So you don't have, you know, the 52-inch chicken breast because... It doesn't have all the antibiotics and Correct. growth hormones and right okay. and eight bucks. So it's a normal sized chicken. <laughs> yeah, which in America would might be called a Cornish hen. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, they're much smaller, much smaller. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, if you were just buying, I mean, you literally could, if you were budget conscious, just get the you know sheet of you know chicken legs and thighs and everything and just dump it in there for, you know, tw- you know whatever, 59 cents a pound or whatever. Uh, so you can kind of govern it there. But, I mean, you just do it a few times, then you kind of know where you land. And it's never the same. I mean, sometimes my kids barely eat chicken and they, and it's, and sometimes, and then some days that, like, because like, uh, we just had our Thanksgiving early and I smoked a turkey. Instead of using chicken, I just used turkey and made fajitas with turkey. So sometimes if I have half and half, I've done half and half also. Oh. But the point is, uh, for me, I, I know we're now, now ran out of time, but um, for me, I think of it more as uh, taco salad than anything. So we also grow uh, bell peppers, or if a bell pepper goes bad, I, w- I go ahead and freeze them, cut up. So um, so depending on your preference. Um, I usually nuke them in the microwave and pour the water off if if they're older. But if they've been recently frozen, I just throw them in there frozen and put a lid on the on it. And I'll saute those bell peppers for part of the fajitas. So the reason I bring that up is you kind of have to do that first. And my family doesn't like big onions. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.